Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our next instalment of the COVID-19 Mental Health Wellbeing Series. I'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land, the Tandanya Red Kangaroo Place, land of the Ghana people, who are the traditional owners of the Adelaide Plains. The Ghana people are an enduring community with ongoing connections to country, including this space where traditional knowledge and practices inspire wonder and innovation. I'm Irma Ranieri, Commissioner for Public Sector Employment and the South Australian President for the Institute of Public Administration South Australia. I'd also like to welcome the public sector, IPA SA partners and supporters to the next instalment of our COVID-19 Mental Wellbeing interview series. I'd like to welcome Commissioner John Mannion and thank him for being here today. I'd also like to thank my office, the Office of the Commissioner for Public Sector Employment and IPA South Australia who have all worked together to deliver today's event. I'd also like to acknowledge IPA's major partners, the State Government of South Australia, Chief Executive Council and IPA sponsors. We also acknowledge IPA's professional members and councillors. Let's introduce John, uh, Commissioner Mannion. John has been appointed the state's newest mental health commissioner and joins his fellow commissioners, Heather Nowak and David Kelly, focusing upon the vision to strengthen the mental health and wellbeing of South Australians. Well done, John. John Mannion is also the inaugural executive director of Breakthrough, Australia's only foundation dedicated solely to mental health research. John's career in mental health has spanned more than 30 years, including as a practitioner, as well as leading mental health services across the state. John led the establishment of Breakthrough in 2018, which this year alone funded more than 20 leading research projects across all the state's universities. Now that's massive, we can talk a bit about that, John. These included projects in the areas of youth mental health, depression, Indigenous mental health and eating disorders, all with a focus upon helping to create a life free of mental health by focusing upon research to inform um, clinical improvements, enhanced outcomes and community connectivity. Now, why don't we start the interview, John? Um, okay. I know, and I know we're going to go straight into the COVID-19 or shall I say the pandemic now, it's gone for so long. It has had a significant impact on mental health. Um, and I think people find it hard to kind of define what that, um, what that looks like. At a more kind of South Australian community level, given the research that you actually do, what's your comments in relation to how the South Australian community is travelling in relation to our reaction to the pandemic? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, one great question, nice soft one to break into. Thanks, Emma. Um, I think when we, we truly look at the impact, we, we know there has been that, that short term crisis impact that, that, that changes to our lifestyles, um, working from home isolation, disconnectivity. Um, then there's the uncertainty that sits with all, well, we thought this was going to go on for six months, 12 months, we're now into the sort two of years. two years. Um, and we're now coming into the, the sort of the next phase. Um, we have then various phases of, that we went through in various phases of lockdown and the impact on that. So that's short term crisis work piece, that bit that that's then impacts on different sort of uh, employment. So, you know, you've gone from hospitality that have just got crushed and, and, and you know, are now working their way out of, of that um, through to other businesses that actually flourished during this period of time. So there's these sort of these two different mixed stories mm -hmm. that actually take mm -hmm. place. Um, from a mental health perspective then, yeah, we, we did see uh, increases then in, in presentations. So but more increases to people actually reaching out, which was a very, very positive sign. Historically, that's been one of the biggest battles we actually face about putting our hand up and actually saying mm. we're really struggling. So we did see sort of that, that reaching out through, through telephone lines, through our um, telehealth systems. And we saw interesting patterns across the emergency department. So across our state uh, metro emergency departments, we actually saw a reduction in presentations over, the, over this oh. pandemic period. Um, but our rural um, communities actually saw a growth, um, mm. around, around 33% growth of presentations. And our younger people, we saw about 50% mm. growth. I want to touch and a bit on young yeah. people. So, yeah. so we've seen various different alterations and changes there. Um, as we're coming out of the pandemic, then uh, now this is where the further groundwork needs to take place. So we put in strategies in place that are actually going to help reduce and help people transition. Are we um, looking at a wide range of, of, of interventions? It isn't just around the, 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 the illness 
part, but specifically around what have been the triggers. So what are we now going to be doing about housing? What are we going to do about employment? Uh-huh. What are we going to do about education? Yeah. These are all the, those, those multifacets that obviously sure. are, are, are uh, precursors and have an impact on our mental health and well-being. Yeah, um, look, we're probably yeah. going to touch on, on some of those. Um, so you've talked a bit about the increase in demand. So you talked a bit about a decrease in the emergency, but increase in rural. Um, can you just talk a little bit about what people, what help people are seeking? So some yeah. insight into <clears throat> when they are presenting, what is it that people are feeling or needing help with? Yeah, yeah. So, so I think um, the sort of um, Wellbeing SA do a household survey. That's and, right. And they've done that survey throughout throughout the whole pandemic. And um, what it did show us is, is, you know, that one in five people were actually um, requiring further support. And out oh. of those, um, I think the, the, the highest presentation was anxiety, then it was depression, then it was other other, other, other sort of stresses and challenges. Um, what we do know, though, in, in those presentations, obviously, the, the, the issues that were causing the anxiety, the issues that were driving the depression were obviously often linked then to the socioeconomic pieces. You know, oh. what about my losing my job? What about oh. my relationship? Oh. Um, we saw changes of, of, of behaviours that were taking place as people going through isolation and, and the complexity that sat there and the pressure that actually aligned to that as well. Um, so it was great in that we did see this increase of reach out. It was great that people were accessing support, but still out of all those people that, 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 that sort of initially reached out, only around 67% actually were then getting interventions. Mm. So that's a we'll cohort of people that. that aren't still getting yep. the support we need. And, and do we then need to be exploring what different alternatives we could actually put into sure. place to support that? Yeah. Look, I, I think that that's something we need to talk about because getting help is actually quite difficult. And what does that help mean? You mentioned anxiety. Um, and uh, I think uh, one of these, uh, the next question is really about um, what can we sort of say to people to protect their mental health and wellbeing during this time. But I really would like you to touch a bit on what's anxiety? Like, well, what sort of things would people be experiencing? Because, you know, I can get quite anxious just, you know, getting ready for a presentation like this. Yeah, yeah, so, what's yeah, the difference yeah. between that healthy sort of tension? Of feeling nervous about something versus anxiety, perhaps about the unknown. So if we if yeah. we do that, and what do we do to help well, ourselves? Every one of us has anxiety, don't yes. we? So we, we, we all use it for our, our, our flight or fight, uh, yep. and, and and you know to achieve. You know, so so the, the nervousness of getting ready for an interview, the nervousness mm. of, of uh, participating in sports or performing something. We need that because that's that kick and that that enables us sure. to achieve. But what happens when, when those feelings of that butterfly in the stomach, that palpitations, the sweaty palm, the dry mouth, the chest pain, um, the fear of actually taking part in something, the avoidance that comes with those fears starts to impact on our everyday life. What happens when I wake up and I'm feeling like that? What happens when I'm going to sleep and I feel like that? And it doesn't dis- dissipate throughout okay. the whole day. And then the ultimate part, of the, when that's prolonged, when it then impacts on our, our day-to-day life, our, our ability to participate in anything, you know, that anxiety that was so debilitating that to actually walk into your office today was just too much for me. That yes. was the, the, the fear of how I was going to perform, were people judging me? Had people noticed this change in me? All those pressure points, then that's when it's becoming that longer term issue. And that's when we really want, obviously, the moment it starts to impact on our day-to-day lives, that's when we want people to be able to reach out or as managers and supporters or friends or, or family members that reaching out and actually checking in with someone's very very good. powerful that's that's good advice it, it, that's a good point you make about coming into the office and other things add the other layer of we need to wear a mask can i get close to this person i'm an extrovert i like connecting with people i can't get too close we can't be in the kitchen together can you just talk a bit about i mean you're talking about the everyday of just coming <coughs> in and out then you have other things that have impacted literally everything that you do, yeah. sanitising, all mm. good things, all need to keep doing it. Yeah. But do you think that's having actually an impact on almost the burden of trying to overcome this? Um, well, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? You know, we, the, the, These are a whole range of strategies that are, that are health related to protect us, and that's beautiful. Yes. What are the strategies then we put into place to protect our mental health uh-huh. that sits with that? So that's, that, let's sort of explore what those those actually could be. Yes, some um, tips, please. So, 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 so some of those <laughs> tips around that. So I think, yeah, there has been those changes. And we've now got this new anxiety the moment you actually go to the supermarket and you forgot to get your mask and you've got to run back and go and get your mask and then yep. get back in again. Um, what happens if, we, if, if someone encroaches into my personal space and, mm-hmm. and I find that very, really difficult? Uh, for some people, though, you know, the, 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 the social isolation, social disconnection has actually been beneficial for them because it's actually been enabled them to actually manage how they're actually feeling. I, I, I phoned my dad yeah. part way through this, my, my family are back over in the UK and I phoned my dad one day and said, you know, how are you coping with dad, you know, with, with sort of um, 
uh, not being able to see all the family. I'm one of seven children, they all live quite close and he couldn't go and see them in the UK because it was a lot more controlled in that, that respect. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I just got this giggle on the end of the phone and he said, well, you know, I'm antisocial. I've been preparing for this moment for 78 years. Um, so, so, you know, so, <laughs> I've heard so, that so, a few yeah. times, um, actually. So, so for some people, it actually has, has enabled people for that for that growth to actually take place, for that stability to land mm. some of those pressure points. Mm. Um, as we translate back to, the, to, to our workplaces, we're now coming back into the city, um, you know, working and, and, and wearing our masks during our work time, etc. There are challenges with that because that, that can be constricting for some people. So it's about yes. how do we build breaks in? You know, some beautiful things I've seen out. It's um, I'm happy to do a meeting catch up. Let's go and do it, and we can have a walk and we can walk around the block yes. doing that and having yep. that conversation together in the same way. Um, looking at uh, sort of earlier meetings where you can actually go and sit outside, having those lunch breaks that enable you to get that fresh air. So so building in those mm. sort of breaks, I That's think, good. are vitally important. And we're giving that advice, and I think if we're going to activate the City, then part of that activation could probably be some pop-up outdoor meeting areas yeah. where you know yeah. so I, mean, I think that th there's some really exciting things that we yeah. can actually do mm. um, so uh, you've talked a little bit about what we can do to kind of um, you know the day-to-day -day, and I think most of us are kind of dealing with that and managing it but there does come a point where it might have got too much for someone and sort of I'd like you to talk to, to us about how do we, maybe as leaders or how do, as a colleagues, know when someone needs actually professional help? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's very interesting, isn't it? Because, you know, often we, we, we have this reflective piece when, when somebody becomes unwell and we go, oh, I did notice. And it's this, this right, we notice that's brilliant. If we're actually noticing a change, what are we noticing? So we're noticing a, a sort of a, a change in someone's presentation. So, so they're maybe a little bit more agitated than they would normally be, or a bit more um, re reclusive, yeah. or you know, you're seeing sort of a, a sort of a change in, in their sort of natural presentation as to what would be their normal mm. presentation. Mm. Um, you might then start to sort of see a change in the way they're actually communicating. So they're either maybe a little bit more short, a bit more aggressive in their nature, or again, that they're detaching, not, not talking at all, mm -hmm. um, short monosyllabic cancers. Um, you then may see sort of uh, uh, changes in, in their sort of performance, you know, so, so they're not able to concentrate, and they're not filling, fulfilling tasks, they're missing deadlines, things mm -hmm. that would not normally be their, their pressure points. You've seen a change in their presentation, so some of us grew beards during COVID period. Yes. What happens when that then becomes dishevelled? What happens when we're wearing the same clothes? What happens when we're not actually looking after ourselves, right. personal hygiene, mm. all those sort of areas? And then that conversation point around the feelings of hopelessness. No one would actually notice that I wasn't here. I'm the weak link in the team. I can't achieve anything. Sure. So these are sort of five areas we can actually always okay. look out for. Now, you don't have to have all those five things happen in your life for you to be really, really struggling. If you see any of those in, in your friends or your colleagues, you know, reach out to them. Try and find a, a safe space mm -hmm. to have that conversation. Good. Just check in. So we know that the, the whole concept about are you okay is based on that. We'll stop in and having a conversation mm -hmm. with someone and asking, ask, asking, asking, are they okay? Now we know that we can have in the worst day under the, in, in, in the world and someone asks that question, we go, yeah, I'm fine, thanks. Yeah. What happens when you say, but, but are you really, Irma? Because I've noticed a change in you. Okay, and then what it, happens it, that it second might, question? Very good. Uh, and yeah. uh, if you'd ever wanted to talk about it, I'm actually here. To, yeah, I'm more than happy to do so. I'm not mm. here as your boss. I'm here as, as as a friend, and I want mm. to be able to help you. Now, the challenge we face around that is, you know, getting people to open up, especially if it's a workplace. What happens if I open up in the workplace? What happens if I actually share that I am struggling? What would be the repercussions? Mm. There is still a challenge around stigma and discrimination. Will I feel supported? Will I get the right help? Will I not be judged? Will I not be taking down performance management? Because this is one of the risks we, we face, isn't it? That if people aren't performing, yeah. is it a performance Absolutely. issue? Yeah. They're actually looking and drilling down into well, what actually might be happening for that person at mm. that period of time. Mm. So with all yeah. that kind of, and, and, and um, I'll, I'll talk a bit about some of the kind of strategies we could uh, have before they mm. get a, a yeah. professional <laughs> um, psychologist or a counsellor, mm. but it's actually really hard to, to get them yeah, now. Yeah. Um, so I think that uh, for us, organisations need to have some short ways or ways of people finding out where they can get support mm. through peer support, mental health, first aiders, things like that. Yeah, yeah. But can the added layer of working from home, and that was actually my next question, um, so it's been a good thing and it's actually disrupted. I've been banging on about working from home since raising my children and the mm. fact that you could do it. So for me, that disruption was great. But there's a reason why we have workplaces as well. Mm. So while people are isolated and you've noticed a change, it's harder to notice over Zoom or over Teams. Mm. So what are the what are some of the tips, I guess, or pros and cons of this the isolation, but you're not actually generally seeing people that often yeah. 
physically. So you might have noticed that, you know, they're not changing their clothes, but actually mm. they're comfortable and they're quite happy doing yeah, it that yeah, way. So yeah. any any views about the kind of the isolation of working from home and not seeing your colleagues? Yeah, yeah. there was a lovely um, a post, I think, on LinkedIn to the weekend. It was, a, it was a business that was returning back to work and, and they told everyone to come into work in, in the clothes they would wear to the teens meeting. So they all came in with shirt and ties and shorts, which I thought was really good and slippers oh, and I stuff like we'll that. I think we'll do which that one. Look at that. Um, um, while while we were got working working from home um, in, in the breakthrough team, I've got a team of, of ten people, it was, and it was a brand new team. We'd actually moved into our new offices with, mm. with uh, new members of, 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 of coming together the week before COVID hit, and then we had to send everyone yes. home. Yes, I've heard a lot, that, that. Yeah. a lot of that. Yeah, a lot of organisations mm. did that. Um, what I found was was really interesting during that period of time. That, you know, for some people, uh, you know, the, the teams conversation, the working from home, that structure, the building and the balance. You know, they were building and going out for the walks. They were having their, their dinner and they were. Perf- performing and they were, they were really enjoying it for others missing that structure that routine of actually coming into an Getting office up, actually yep. sitting in that, yep. that, that sense of purpose sense of belonging connection mm. social piece so so there was a, there was a really good uh, gentleman if ever anyone wants to follow him on, on uh, LinkedIn a, a chat called Graham Cowan Okay. And Graham's actually one of the directors for Are You Okay? He's a, he's a, he's a, 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 a sort of a, an advisor, a guider as mm. well. And he, he, he covers a whole range of different um, approaches in, in just a beautiful manner. Uh, and one of my favourite ones, he, he, he posed the question, you know, the Are You Okay? is based on four concepts. What happens if we built that into our workplace? What happens if we build it into some of our conversations? So every Teams meeting I was having with an individual, I would do these four set questions that Graham asked, and, and oh. that became the, the sort of the narrative of the conversation. And we now do that in our weekly huddle as the team. Mm. They all know what they're going to be talking about. So the first question is, is how are you? And mm-hmm. we'll, when we have this honest conversation, and, and it can be about anything. Mm-hmm. So, it, so it can be about how they are or what's happening at home or how the kids are. We've heard some unusual stories on Teams, you know, where we, you know, we now know which members of our teams use dry shampoo. Uh, we know which members of the team's children came in and actually said, oh, mum, we don't need to worry about that Lego that I ate yesterday. I've just pooed it out, oh, announced it to a whole great. team. So yes. all this, 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 that's normal. That's actually okay. That's Please great. don't apologise for that. We've met a lot of dogs. And we've met lots and lots of dogs and cats and, and what have you. But that was this, this, this important piece about that personal connection. Personal, yeah. The second big question you actually asked them then is, is tell me a piece of work that you were proud of achieving last week. Okay. So again, the angle yeah. automatically turns to the positive conversation, mm. the focus, and, mm. and, and, and what was achieved. Then the, th- the third question then is, 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 what are the three things that you, you're actually working on this week, which are your priorities? And the fourth question, what can I do to help you help achieve you. those? It's and, good and, performance and management, so good leadership. It's beautiful yep. in, in yep. that respect. But it's great because then the team are actually coming with those narratives sure. already. And, and now we're getting people, I've got four. Oh, is that all right? Can I tell you about the four things I'm working on? You know, and, and so, so that, that's sort of enabling that growth to take place. Graham also did a very clever same sort of question concept about when you return to the office. So when you return to the new normal, what is it about the new normal that you want to keep? What is it you want to change? That's a so good point. Yeah. And again, similar sort of questions around what did we learn during that, 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 that working from home time that was actually positive that we don't lose sight of. So for my team at Breakthrough, it was then um, we were having an 11 o'clock coffee uh, and, and during that time we don't talk about work. It's 11 o'clock, we have a coffee together. When we finish the coffee, everyone mm. gets back on. Um, and we still do that a couple of days a week. And that's Fantastic. where you have, have that, that yep. connection together. And um, the other piece then was the fact that they um, identified when I finish my work, I want to look up and see how I can help somebody else. And because that's what they were doing online and yeah. checking in. So how, yeah. do, how do we translate that? So, yeah. so again, it was the, these questions around what do we want to do? What do we want to keep? What can we continue to improve? What do we want to grow? Again, four Fantastic. Con- concepts. And you can brainstorm those together. You know, the good old um, butcher's yep. paper came out, the post-it pads mm. came out and some really inventive ideas. And they then became our return to work strategy. So, oh, so really looking great. at the sort of uh, you know the, again this 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 beautiful way about um, in the mental health world how we actually connect, how we mm. actually use compassion mm. in our approach, how we actually sit and listen, because a lot of the time um, it, the, the actual listening and acknowledging what's actually happening is the powerful piece. It's not that we're actually having to fix it, because actually I've in my whole career I've never fixed anybody, but I've stood mm. next to lots of people when they've done it. And yeah. I've helped them and I've guided them and I've supported them. And there's lots of incredible well, people out in our community doing that as well. Great tips. Thank you, John. And really, for me, that's fundamentally what a leader needs to be doing. So I think those those kind of tips and definitions are exactly what leadership is about. Mm. Um, and just fellow um, human beings yeah, working yeah, with each so. other. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to head into the questions from our audience okay. um, because I think we've kind of set the scene a bit about what it is that they can do to help, how they can help themselves. But let's go into some um, specific questions that people have actually posted. Okay. 
A large component of well-being is the feeling of connectedness with a larger community. You've talked about that. How do we foster that feeling in our teams? I think you've given us a bit of that, especially new people. And I did notice that we did have new people start um, in the middle of lockdown. Um, and so we haven't actually met any of these people in person. Um, so uh, especially when you are wanting to make that connection. So perhaps you've touched a bit on the other. What about yeah. new people? So um, new, any yeah. tips on well, I, th I think, yeah, especially when you first come in, so, so, so not making, because the risk is we, we come back to work and we get excited and we want to get on with our jobs. Uh, and during that period of time, the new person sits on the side going, what is happening? Yeah, who are these who people? Who are these people? Where are they? Where do they come from? How do they know all this? How do they know yeah. it? So, so how are we building in, you know, our orientation, our induction? Um, you know, we, we know connecting someone with a buddy is always a beautiful thing because mm. that sounding board, they can ask, you know, and, they can, and you can set some beautiful ground rules. There is no daft question to ask. Mm. You know, if you, in fact, if you ask me a daft question and if I don't know the answer, I've probably forgotten about it and maybe I need to go back and think mm. about that. So, mm. so that Maybe it's not of, so daft because you don't know so the daft, answer. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, re really, really not making any assumptions, looking at sure. those regular check-ins for people. Mm. Um, also looking at ways in which you can connect them with others. Mm. Um, building in th those, those activities within the team. So, you know, that, that morning coffee, the afternoon sure. sessions, uh, guest speakers coming in, building all those in so you're constantly building up this new skill set. Um, but also getting some feedback. Uh, mm. Have we hit the right things? Have we missed anything out? Is there anything else you need to know? And the challenge for that is, we obviously, um, what we don't know, we don't know. So we mm. don't know if we can ask that. Mm. Um, so, so looking at all those different touch points as well. Making sure then if someone is struggling as well, you know, what are the mechanisms we have in place? So do we have an EA, EAP if someone wants to go and talk sure. to someone? Um, which do you actually have? Which we've done we, a lot of that. Lot yeah. Of, yeah. Um, and our EAPs are, are really expanding and growing. They're, they're mm. not just that, that come to talk to me session. They're actually now, well, actually we've got all these new education work that's actually coming out. We've got some really good signs and, and tips and skills and newsletters. So they're really looking at really inventive mm. ways to actually mm. engage. Mm. Um, We've, we've had our EAP coming in and doing various different sessions. Um, but also look at some alternative stuff. So, so last year, um, during, in our transition back, we, we um, had an art therapist that came in to do two sessions with us. Oh, wow. she, she did a very first session online, so we did art online. And then the second session, she came in and actually did the session in the office. Um, so a lady called Belle Ryan, and she, she's absolutely beautiful. I think a lot of, of people know Belle in, in, in South Australia. Um, but um, she, the, the session she does, she, she can shape towards what you need of your team are. So ours was a return back to work. So she actually got us making some um, bags and decorating the bags. And the bag was to symbolise what you were carrying as you came back into work oh. and what you wanted people to see. So what often was yeah. inside the bag might be very different than what you portrayed. Oh, and that's right. often what we're like, aren't we? Yeah. We all hide behind this mask of, I'm confident, mm. I know what I'm doing, where internally I've got the anxiety, uh, mm. I'm not going to hit that deadline, I can't go and tell her I'm not going to meet the, the report she's wanted me to do and how am I going to manage that, all those complexity pieces. Mm. And so it was a really good way to un unwrap that. Sounds so, great. So, yeah, so looking at those alternatives. Yeah. And yet, you, you, they, they never underestimate the power of actually sitting and going for a walk with somebody, having that coffee and okay. just stopping. That's great, that, that's really good advice. The only thing I'd touch on as well, it's not a question, but um, you know, people reaching out and leaders in particular checking in, mm -hmm. I just want to acknowledge a lot of leaders actually felt the anxiety themselves. So yeah. not on top of their <clears> own <throat> life situation, their inability to connect with their people, their own anxiety, mm -hmm. and then having to think about a lot of other people. I think I'm just not forgetting those at very senior levels yeah. um, and the kind of, but they need to be in control and manage things we need to give them as much support to be able to support others exactly, as well. Exactly, because you know, there, there, there is that risk, isn't there? That we, we fear that if we, we start to touch someone and someone opens up and we share, they share what's mm. actually occurring, that we then hold it. No, that's not our job to hold that. Mm. Our, our job is to support the person. Yeah. Um, I've been a very strong yeah, believer yeah. in leaders showing their own vulnerability. Mm. Um, and certainly I've done that um, over time, but yeah. it sometimes can, can be quite um, confronting for some leaders because we need to be in control. Exactly, um, yeah, yeah. And, and there is that balance. I, I, I shared a photograph at uh, <laughs> the uh, Business SA um, Big Breakfast mental, in Mental Health Week. And it was a photograph of me um, fast asleep on a minibus um, <laughs> where um, we, uh, I took part in the Lara Pinter trek as a fundraiser yes. last year and um, all my 
what I thought were friends had taken this photograph and then uh, logged into my LinkedIn account and changed my profile of me asleep on the minibus with my mouth wide open. Yep. Now, I wish I'd had a mask on because no one would have actually seen that. Uh -huh. But I loved the concept of, because uh, I, I showed it in the presentation, there was 600 people and I said, you know, this is this yep. whole thing about vulnerability yep. and sharing this and it, it, it's fun and, 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 and in the photograph, but actually I feel confident to do this because I actually don't yep. know all the answers. I'm no. still learning no matter how long I've been in this business. Yep. Um, I'm still trying to, to gain and, and, and if you show Show that vulnerability yourself the ability to connect with others during that crisis time is enhanced it actually relaxes them because yeah, they go if that's so. the case then I'm okay if I've got got issues so let's let's go to the next question from the uh, from our audience um, and and I know that you uh, do a lot around suicide prevention um, as well stigma around mental health is uh, still prevents people from telling their managers um, about any issues that they're having um, mm. and I know just from my own kind of history that mental health is something that is not often talked about. We're probably talking a bit more about the anxiety, but mm. there are, some people might have some significant underlying mental health issues. Um, and people think that they just can't hack it. Um, they're asking what employers in the public sector can do to, to combat this. So, you know, I guess, what's some advice mm. from someone in your industry yeah. for... I, I think I think it's a great question. I think we're, we are having more mental health conversations than we've ever had. We're having That's them right. in, in all different environments, in our workplaces, in our sports clubs, in mm. our own, own, own communities. And that's an incredible alteration and change. 30 years ago, that was done behind a closed door and you never put your hand up about it or expressed mm. it. The next phase is, um, in these conversations, are we now listening? Okay. Uh, and I think that's really important. So are we really listening to what's actually being said and what we can actually learn from that? Mm. Um, a lot of people are not after us to fix the issue. They just want to be heard mm. and then they want to be supported or guided during that period of time. Or they just want to, 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 to know that it's actually okay to have these conversations. So I think from a workplace perspective, are, are we enhancing our knowledge, so our mental health literacy, our understanding? So we, you know, we've got obviously uh, mental health first aiders uh, within yes, our organisations, but there's a raft of different programmes out there that can actually um, build on top of that. I think mental health first aid is a beautiful foundation. I'm a mental health first aid trainer, um, and, and I love teaching the course but it's it's and that's a great foundation but what then sits on top of it so there's a new program which is that you know how to have the conversation with a suicidal person which then goes more into the compassionate connectivity that's required sure. during that period of time and then there's a raft of other accidental mm. counselor com uh, courses mm. Mm. um through to assist so that so there's lots there but from a workplace perspective if you could start to look at well if we were to develop a mental health plan for our organization what would it look like so is it safe to put your hand up Mm. Do our policies and procedures support the conversation for mental health, where it doesn't become a performance com com conversation, it becomes a support mechanism? Do we have access to EAP? Do we actually have good supervision and, and support mechanisms? Is there an opportunity to have mental health days? All, all those sort of pieces sure. of the puzzle, can, can we explore that further? So I think we have really great pockets of this, um, but we do need to expand that and, and make that, that the, yeah. the everyday course. But also preparing someone, if someone is feeling that I want to open up, preparing them for what is the expectation during that period of time. Of course, because um, you might need to change. you might need to change yeah. that. Talking to your line manager might not necessarily be the right person. You know, I, I might not be the right person that you want to talk to, sure. but I actually know someone else that would be really Can good do. for you in connecting that way. Um, so I think there's a range of different things we, we need, mm. need to build into there. But also I think from, from managers, try and look behind necessarily the behaviour that's happening or what you're observing and try and ask what might be the triggers that have changed? Because this isn't what would normally happen. John doesn't normally do this. So is there something actually happening underneath mm. there for him? Is there extra pressures, etc.? That's great. Um, a couple of plugs. Um, so we did, uh, we've had a couple of uh, surveys across the public sector. Mental health and, and wellbeing comes up each time. It has this current survey. Um, the Mentally Healthy Workplaces Toolkit mm -hmm. was, came out of that. Um, mental health first aiders, thousands of them trained and peer support officers. Um, and now we're going deeper with uh, Wellbeing SA and other places uh, around Head for Work and other things, and that's just about to be launched. So, yes, I, 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 yeah. saw, I saw your new promo. I love the, the so you have, you have, you've got your wellbeing piece, but I love one of the other connections where you talk about a safe place yes and that's so really we're important. learning I, I yeah. think you know what what we've done I th you know this last two years 
having asked people, we've at least got a few things there for people within the public sector to be able to use. So I'm really excited mm, about yeah. that and we'll continue to partner yeah, with, with your area. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so this is probably just taking the, the issue around mental illness um, and how you can actually have a conversation, I guess, during your discussions, regular discussions with your manager. Mm -hmm. So how, and I'd be really interested in getting a tip on how do I integrate some of this conversation into a performance, just how, what, what are the tasks that you're doing this week? Um, I think you've mentioned some of the informal stuff. Mm. How do we formalise going, well, these are your tasks, yeah. but how are you kind of going to a feeling about doing it? So just to, you know. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a good question, isn't it? Because none of us want to increase somebody's anxiety. No. Um, but we have jobs to do. Mm. Um, we have targets to achieve. We have KPIs to achieve. Um, but how do we make sure that during the, the, the concept of achieving our KPIs, we actually don't lose the compassion connectivity during that period? I like of time? that word. Yeah. Yeah. So how do we keep touching point? How, what else can I do to help? Are you, you know, and, and, and that regular touch point, that regular mm -hmm. conversation, are there any other uh, partners within the workplace we can connect you with during this period of time? Um, how do you build in flags that if I am struggling, I'm not going to hit my deadline? How can I do that in a safe way and explore that mm -hmm. together? And so I think that those are really sort of important pieces. Um, but also that, 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 that thing, the, 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 the conversation around, you know, that the, the we, we will have feelings of anxiety with feelings of sadness, and they're actually normal feelings to have mm. during periods of time. doesn't mean we're experiencing a mental health challenge. Yes, I think um, it's a stigma. So, so about, it is yeah. the stigma of that. So, so that, that balance. But being mindful then if, if, if my anxiety or it starts to impact and over a longer period of time to, to then start that next conversation, is there anything else I can do? I've mm. noticed that change. And I think the, the angle of I've noticed takes the pressure off somebody because you're not asking how are you because mm. that's all back at me. Mm. Where if, so if it's just it, what you've yeah, seen. So I've you're noticed just, yeah. that you know, you're not your normal self. You seem to be struggling here. In fact, you, know, you missed a deadline. I've never known you to miss a deadline. Mm. Yeah, is, is there mm. anything happening that I can actually help with? What, what, mm. what can we do together? Mm. Um, and also, I think the, one of the most powerful things is, is to check back in with somebody. Um, we, yeah. we often say, when we, if you've had a mental health conversation, you know, that next day, send that text. You never know how important that text mm. could be because um, it showed you a listening, it showed you a connecting, and you showed you really mm. valued what was actually said to you and shared with you. Because mm. if I share some, something or somebody shares something with me, I, I never undervalue what that is. That it, it, For someone to own up to say they're struggling is, is, is an enormous trust thing to put to you. Um, so really trying to work and, and, and value that honesty from that person mm. and then trying to put the support there. I think that's really powerful. Yeah. But the touch point that you actually listened, you sure. heard what I'd actually said. And I was thinking about this last night and what I'm going to do is I'm going to meet you up with so-and-so because I think they've had mm. that challenge before and let's see if we can mm. brainstorm together. It just mm. showed you a listen and it showed there's some action there. Yeah. Look, I actually personally do that a lot. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I think it's absolutely invaluable because, you know, if something's stuck in my head and I felt for that person and I thought, well, you know, maybe I can help here and I will text or yeah. I will perhaps send a, a confidential email mm. or whatever, mm. it, just go, it, it just goes so far mm. in people, th you know, well, you were actually thinking about my issue and that you've come with, you know, be empathetic like, mm, and, yeah. and offer some, so I think that's a great great but, uh, advice. But I like your question before when you said, well, how do we do that for managers as well? Because sometimes we can be extremely busy and we might miss that point. Yeah. We might miss the sign, we might miss out, we might not. So we might have thought, oh, I need to send that and then we don't get around to it. So it's about being, also being kind to ourselves during that yeah. period of time. Yeah, I think the, the thing for me is, because that's, that's my life the whole time, I, I always think I'm busy. But I've actually kind of factored in my head, I'm never too busy to send a text to someone mm. that will take me 30 seconds mm -hmm. to just ask about something. Yeah. And the, the, you know, if you want to think about it in terms of outcomes, the productivity and the well-being that you'll get from it mm. will mean that you will have the time to give yourself care mm. because they will, your people will be doing things for you because they know you care. Yes. And yeah, I think yeah. that we forget that if we keep being leaders of just asking them to do things like robots, mm -hmm. but if you if you spend the time doing the care for your staff, they'll deliver the outcomes mm, yeah, for you. And that so. certainly yeah. has been something over my career yeah. that I've realised. Um, so you've already mentioned the thing about um, uh, leaders having, so we're, all our buckets might be empty now. 
and uh, you know I th I'm feeling that um, on a number of occasions. What what's some advice for people with empty buckets in terms of no more to give or oh yeah not not another, not um, another. you know yeah. Yeah, lockdown or not another kind of yeah. issue or now my kid is you know you know a close contact or this mm. just seems like it's one thing let alone life that's actually happening so. Empty buckets. We've all got empty buckets. Any any kind of tips, any tips on that? On that? Um, I think um, the Oromir Institute at Flinders University um, during COVID came up with a beautiful concept. They came up with a concept called Stream, um, and this was a way in which you, you, you you're actually managing what was actually happening around you. So the the, the S stood for for um, social distance. And, and and in the context that we were being asked to social distance, but we were actually weren't being asked to socially disconnect. Yeah, and so, I, so, yeah. So I use yeah. physical distance actually yeah, yeah, because yeah. social distance actually has different connotations. Well, that, and and that was the connotation yeah. from the mental yeah. health perspective. So you're saying during that period of time, how do you still remain connected? So, yeah. so you know, we, you know, it's very it was fabulous to watch right at the start, wasn't it? You know, we had all these operas taking place online. We were having quiz nights with families and friends, mm. all those sort mm. of things. Um, and let's not lose sight how powerful they were, because I think That's when right. we went into second phase, we stopped doing some of those things. We did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, the T stood for actually time out, allowing yourself time out. You know, and giving yourself permission to go for that walk, walk the dog, go for a swim. You know. Um, my wife reminded me when, when uh, we first went into the lockdown, I was going on Teams conversations and, I, and I'd, I'd go into the, the back office at eight o'clock because they didn't have me travel. And I'd let me travel at the end, so all of a sudden I extended my day by two hours. Of and course, then I'd go a from, lot of people doing yeah, that. Mm. And then I ended up going from Teams, 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 Teams. Mm. And I remember part way through, I got this knock on the door and I said, you do know it's dark outside. Um, mm. Because I hadn't built in, I just, I was consciously thinking we need to keep this going um but wasn't then looking after the time out for myself so building in and actually having that that lunch break having that coffee break um making time to actually meet with people and um, the r then stood for how do you build in sort of that relaxation concept so how do you actually then look at building in you know sort of that that sort of uh, um uh, yoga mindfulness the concept to actually stop mm. for a period of time uh, the E then stood for you know the positive impact of exercise and going out and doing something that's mm. connectivity, and sometimes you can do that in your family unit, and mm. we can still be looking at doing that now. Uh, the A stood for alternative thinking. So mm. at that period of time, we were very much we we, we were getting bombarded by every mm. media platform telling us this statistic, this statistic, this story, this impact, all those things, and we were getting this sort of overload. And it was asking us really to, well, what happens if we just had one source of truth and we just looked at that one piece mm. and, and, and looking at that? But us then looking about, well, well you know, how do we take some control of what's actually happening around us when we felt totally out of control? And the M stood for mindfulness, but it wasn't mindfulness of you. It was, can you be mindful of your impact on others? Great. So That's really good. How we were behaving impacts our family and our unit. So, so looking at that, that whole stream piece, that, that there are touch points in there that you know we can that can all build into that. That's actually positive about every part of our own well-being, especially as we're going through. You know, the, uh, we're already we're, in, we're already into going into March. It feels like it's been a long year already. Um, it's true. <laughs> you know, um, we we, all, we're, we you know we've got uh, we're opening up. We've got the opportunity to go out to the fringe at the same time as actually managing it in a very safe way. And that connection, we're trying to get back into our cities we're trying to build in plan for can we build a family holiday this year where might that actually be how can we have that time out so so as we're doing that just just thinking about some of those steps that build in some right. of those simple self-help strategies mm -hmm. i think you've actually answered quite a few of the last questions um some of them around um leaders uh, uh to support their own mental health um and uh, putting them in a better place to support their team which i think you've actually covered um i think we've covered this mostly but any other things you'd like to say about capabilities that leaders need to develop um, uh, in order to now um, support, I guess, what the next phase might be. So mm. any tips for leaders around their own sort of mental health yeah, or capabilities? Yeah. I think um, any opportunity to get more knowledge and understanding about what actually is mental health is vitally important. Great, yep. you know, and, and, and looking at that. Um, looking at um, uh, new skills development, so you know the, the the and some of those skills around how you engage with someone can be quite simple, which we often don't think they are. So you know, have I got time to have the conversation? Have we got a safe place in which we can do it? Can I do it where I can just uh, have ask some open-ended questions to get a safe conversation taking place? Can I do this over a period of time? We don't have to have the mental health conversation in one chunk. It can mm. be built up as we build up that trust with somebody. Um, can we um, give some simple tips and clues? but also realising that it's not our job to fix, but we can help shape and guide. Um, checking back in, 
really important and really powerful. But then what do we do about managing our own well-being? So how do we escalate if we're, we're concerned about somebody? How do we utilise our own supervision? How do we build in well-being things for ourselves? So um, I, I started yoga. I'm, I'm as flexible as a plank of wood. Uh, and my daughter has been going to yoga and so she, she asked me to join um, and I found it one of the most incredible um, it is activities. Good. It's absolutely mm. beautiful. And I set a very simple target. Well, two simple targets. I wanted to be able to touch my toes. I can mm. now do that. You can is, do that. Well done, beautiful, John. Which is yes, a big, so big, big achievement for me. Leaders need to touch we their need to toes. Touch our toes. <laughs> it was very important. But the, but the other part was, was around, I actually wanted to stop thinking while I was at yoga. Ah. Uh, I'm constantly, you know, the moment I start, I don't, my mind's constantly thinking about the next thing mm. and what have you. Uh, and so I set smaller tasks. So it's an hour and a half session. So I said I wanted just 10 minutes to let my mind rest for 10 minutes. And I wanted to build it up. Mm. And so I'm now an hour and 15 where I'm actually not thinking great. about work. And then as it's mm. coming to the end and I'm relaxing, I'm starting to think about the next day. Excellent. But that's grown over that period of time. So setting realistic goals mm. within that, mm. realistic achievements. Mm. Um, but then making sure that those are some of those simple touch points, you know, going out for a walk with your, your partner and walking your dog together, having that sort mm. of time out, stopping doing things doing things as a group we've got a group who, who are, we live in the hills uh, it's, it's it's wood collecting season can you believe it mm. 30 degrees and we're already thinking about our log fires but doing activities together and those mm. physical activities are really mm. sort of engaging but also enjoying south australia we live in one of the best cities in the whole we world do. um there's some mm. beautiful connectivity in there and, and i I remember in, in a preparation for a speech, a talk I was doing, I asked my, my hairdresser, what's important for your well-being? And he said, finding the pleasure in the simplest things. Yes, I totally agree and with I that. I think that yep. is incredible. We've got beautiful beaches to go and yep. walk on. We've got great mm. environments to sit in. You can go and walk through our city and go and find a new piece of artwork every day. You can. Um, so there are those. And I know mm. when you're going through a crisis time, they may feel, oh, that's just ridiculous. I've got all this going on. But it's just more about trying to get some of those balances built in as well. Mm. So, yeah, if you are going through a crisis time, please reach out. You never, we never want, and in, in, in society we've got now, we should never have it that people don't feel safe to reach out. And Great. if somebody does reach, reach out to you, you're doing something incredible because you made them feel safe to do so. Great. Yeah. Thank you. There's some really great comments to kind of end it on. I want to end optimistically. Um, so we've gone through these last two years. I'm really, really excited about the future. Um, and I'm really excited about potentially, I think that you, you talked a bit about um, adapting and innovation and new. So um, we can reinvent ourselves. Um, I'd like to, to kind of leave everyone on a final comment that you might make around optimism. And um, there's a lot for all the reasons that you talked about for us to look forward to. So any final comments to anyone watching this? Anybody? Um, yeah. Um... I, I agree with you. I think this 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 actually is a, an incredibly exciting time. Um, when a crisis or a disaster happens, it's also an opportunity to be inventive and think outside mm. the box. I remember we wanted to do telehealth years ago in, in our health systems. We were told we couldn't do it because we didn't have the system to do so. All of a sudden, when we couldn't see anybody, the systems worked. Um, so, so pushing those boundaries, coming up with ideas. No idea is a bad idea unless you start to mm. play around with it. Mm. Um, be there and support people during this period of time though. Not everyone will be able to start running straight away. Some will be a little bit more cautious. Mm. Um, and every one of us is beautiful and unique in our own individual ways. So work with those. Thank you so much, John. That's great yeah. to end it with. So thank you, John uh, Mannion, for being here today. Um, please, everyone, uh, visit IPA's website for more events, including our new mental health and wellbeing check-in webinar series for the public sector, which is starting on the 10th of March. Um, an evaluation form seeking your feedback on today's forum will be included on the IPA website. I ask you please to take the time to provide your thoughts on today's discussion, um, as this will help IPA design upcoming events in the future. Once again, everyone, thank you so much for listening in. Please take care of yourself. Uh, we're in it together and have a great day.